Folkestone is an art school. So I'm going to make a concrete boat now. That's a piece that I made several years ago. So I'm making a template. Boat shape template. I'm going to cut that out of timber. So art is, uh, it can be about incredible skill. It can be about the denial of incredible skill. It can be about no skill. It can be about using other people's skills. It can be about doing just enough. In a way, this is about doing just enough. It's not a highly skilled activity. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this wooden shape out. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to make the mould. Actually, if you cut out any shape, you can make any kind of object very simply like this. Now, we need to make it watertight, this boat. If we took this down to the seafront and put this in the sea now, the danger is that it might actually float. So we, what we need to do is to fill that with uh, concrete. So let's do that. What I should do really is nip down to the, the beach and get some sand. But what I'm going to do is improvise <laughs> with some old bits of sculpture that I've got here. The reason why I use cement is basically it's the cheapest material that goes off that you can put into a mould. So this is an extremely crude mould, but of course artists have used moulds for, you know, centuries. This is probably the crudest method of mould making, but, um, but you know, you can put, you could make a bronze boat use, using not such a dissimilar method, or you could make a plaster uh, boat. The nice thing about concrete is that it's cheap and also the amazing thing about it is that it's liquid stone. <laughs> I, just, I just can't get over that. I don't really want you to do this <laughs> but the point about doing this is to make an object with a unlikely material. So when we come to the homework section of this section, that's what I want you to think about. Make, a, make an object out of a material which is inappropriate. This boat will never float. And that's because of the material. It looks like a boat, of course, it's not a boat. It's just a thing that looks like a boat. But it's also 
bit of a poetic object, it's a melancholy object, making something that will never function. But it's not broken, it's been fabricated that way. It'll no never know the caress of water. Well, it will do, but it will sink straight into it. Art is all about material experience. How we experience the world looking by the, by the medium of the material. So let's have a go. The quirky thing is, uh, <laughs> for a concrete boat, it's actually moving around quite a lot. And it's sliding down these sharp slope of these pebbles into the sea. It wants to go to the sea, this material. I mean, the, the thing that surprises me about revisiting this work <laughs> is how much the concrete boat wants to be a boat. My sense of anthropomorphizing the concrete boat is really strong and I really want that boat to be a boat. Look, it's turned over. I think there are things that are hard to explain about the concrete boat, which are sort of ineffable, in that you can't get to them. Uh, one is the humour in it, I suppose, but the other thing that's obvious is that the concrete boat doesn't float. It's made out of concrete, it's the shape of a boat. Of course, it's not a boat, it's just an object. Beachcombing is an important aspect of uh, art making and inspiration. We seem to be in a speedboat and surfboard graveyard here. Oh, what's this? Number five. Folkestone is an art school. Who's looking? Who's it for? Who's looking? Who's it for? So this little segment's about colour. When I paint, I use a uh, material called uh, one-shot paint, and really it's to satire the whole business of traditional painting on some kind of level, because it's a kind of gloss paint. It only does one thing, only lies flat. But paint, artist paint, is an extraordinary substance. It's not just coloured toothpaste. And uh, this is a palette that's laid out in a very traditional kind of way. Uh, you start with uh, flake white or titanium white over here, going through yellow, going through all the ye yellow ochres, going through Venetian red into red, bright red, and then you leap into green, blue, and then perhaps browns and blacks here, deep blacks or purple you could have over here. But paint has a particular kind of chemistry that's interesting to think about. Before the 17th, 18th century, uh, paint was really made out of things like alizarin crimson was made out of uh, little beetles, grinding up beetles, and, uh, and then all the uh, reds and uh, things like Venetian red and raw umber, 
they were made out of uh, earth and soil. Raw sienna was made out of cow pea. Uh, and, but then uh, blue was a very rare kind of colour uh, and uh, people used to get lapis lazuli in the 15th and 16th century from Afghanistan, which is a stone, and grind it up. In the uh, 1700s, there was a, a complete revolution because chemistry got going. And it was really like the enlightenment or the beginning of science in a way. So when chemistry got going, suddenly there were a whole range of new kinds of colors. And so you get colors like uh, viridian and vermilion and Prussian blue. All the paintings by Delacroix, they're painted, they are a revolution actually in painting because he's working at the forefront of paint technology. And the thing about those colours is that they were all translucent. So before the uh, 17th century, there were no translucent colours. And really by making glazes, you could, ha you could create incredible depth. And then you get a sort of an incredible virtuosity in, in paint and how paintings were made. Tungsten is an art school. Yes, it is. Make an object that involves an unlikely alliance between the image and the craft or the material that makes that object.